In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I want to just say how grateful I am to see everybody here. And one by one, Dajjal led to me, and many, many people are following on the live stream, more than 2,000 a week. I'm so happy that they're following along. And the community is opening up more and more. I just heard yesterday on the news, Disneyland, in one month Disneyland opens up. Isn't that great? Not all at once. You know, first, bit by bit, Disneyland. When you enter Main Street, you know, to the left to the right, there's all those, you know, stands. Vahastanga, Achevastanga, Etyatastanga, Badudastanga, Asehaistan image, right? Vahastan, Tomorrowland, Archevastan, Frontierland, Hekyatastan, a fantasy land, and Ashush Badudastan, adventure land. So, bit by bit, okay? Again, I'm getting crickets from you guys, but at home, I want you to know they're really, okay? And if you repeat those jokes, you have to give me credit because I struggled over those jokes. Had the dictionary open and then. Well, as I was saying in Armenia a second ago, today is the Feast of Holy Etchmiadzin, but yesterday is the Feast of St. Gregory. You cannot separate the two. St. Gregory Etchmiadzin, it's the same. His greatest work, and for those of you who go to Hayastan today, you'll see and you know the history it's all about. And in fact, um, I don't think there's a diocese in the world, not a single diocese in the world, that doesn't have at least one parish named after St. Gregory. Of course, in the West, the greatest is... Pasadena St. Gregory, also Fowler, California, the oldest, the first church of the Western Diocese, built and constructed in 1910. And I can imagine the discussion they must have had, that first generation, simple people they were, from Kharper, you know, people of the land. What name shall we give to this parish? Gaskatskar, Krikulusabuich. They named it after St. Gregory. I don't know of any Armenian community in the world that doesn't have at least one family named Krikulian. So let's ask, what's the fascination with the legacy of St. Gregory? Well, such a rich history. When Christianity was still illegal in Armenia, illegal, he, Gregory, kept his faith. And King Birta didn't. So as a member of the royal court, that was enough to be punished right there. And since Gregory wouldn't renounce his faith, he was thrown into the enclosed underground pit, a dungeon, Khorbidab, and it's still in Armenia today. The tourists go, the faith-filled go on the pilgrimage. <laughs> Meanwhile, the king loses his mind and 13 years later, still in the dungeon, the royal court takes a risk. Maybe Gregory can help heal the king. So he gets released, Gregory prays over the king, and the king is healed. Not the end of the story. King Dirtad now healed, decrees Christianity be the official faith of Armenia in 301 AD and gets baptized in the process, making Armenia the world's first Christian nation. Now this was before Emperor Constantine decreed his Christian legal in the Roman Empire, with the request of his mother, St. Helena. Okay, that's the story, and every Armenian knows it. And I will not make that the subject of this message. Why does every Armenian in the world know that story? Because we're proud to be the first Christian nation. I'm going to repeat it. We know that story because we're proud to be the first Christian nation. The problem is, we shouldn't take credit for work of other people. Sure, we're ethnic Armenian. But we did nothing to earn that honor. That was an accident of birth. That by itself, there's no reason to stand up and say, I'm proud we're the first Christian nation. Or... I'm proud we defended Christianity during the Vartans. Were any of us alive in 301 AD? Were any of us at the Battle of Avarayr in 451? Are we really going to take credit for the work of other people? Where I come from, that's called plagiarism. The question to ask is not how proud we are to be descendants of the first Christian nation. The question to ask is, what have we done about being descendants of the first Christian nation? The question to ask is, what have we done about being worthy to even inherit the legacy of the first Christian nation? The question to ask is not, do you know the story? We know the story. The question is, how have we allowed the story to have an impact in our lives? What's overlooked is the incredible parallel between St. Gregory and Jesus Christ. The parallel between the life of St. Gregory 
and the mission of Jesus Christ. What we overlook is the standard set by St. Gregory on his journey as a follower of Jesus for the rest of us on our journey as followers of Jesus. Think of it this way. The greatest event in the life of Jesus Christ is his resurrection. That's the foundation of Christianity. I was trying to say in, second in, Ar in Armenia a second ago, St. Paul said it, and I can't say it any better. Without the resurrection, there is no faith. Without faith, there is no hope. Without hope, our prayers are pointless and empty. Yes, Christ resurrected from the dead. But in order to be resurrected from the dead, he first had to carry his cross. He first had to be crucified. He first had to endure three days imprisonment in the grave. Such a humiliation for the creator of the universe, his other title, God. Yes, Gregory enjoyed the glory of freedom, but when released from the pit, first he endured 13 years imprisonment in the pit. Yes, you and I live in the hope of the resurrection. We're followers of Christ. But to enjoy eternal life, first we have to endure carrying our own cross. First we have to endure the imprisonment of our own sins. Let's look at three parallels. One, Jesus Christ in the Holy Sepulchre, the tomb in Jerusalem. Two, St. Gregory in Chorvirab, the underground pit, the prison, the dungeon in Hayastan. Three, you and I in the imprisonment of our very own sins. All three parallels and in happiness, but proceed with agony. For Jesus, the imprisonment of death in the sepulcher came before his resurrection. For Gregory, the imprisonment in Chorvirab came before his freedom to teach the gospel message and convert the nation. For us, imprisonment in our own sins comes before our opportunity to carry our cross and embrace eternal life. Now, the greatest miracle of God the Father is what? The creation of the universe, right? Unparalleled. Why did he do it? Why did God create the universe? For one reason, in order for us to love him back. God is love. He couldn't love nothing. He expects that's a, um, a transitive relationship. It's a transitive verb, love. We are to love him back by loving his creation. It's a straightforward deal. God's creation of the universe is not complete until and unless we participate in it by loving one another. Imagine that. God's greatest work, the creation, isn't done until you and I participate in it. Forget that six, seven day stuff. It's not done until we participate. Same deal for Jesus. His greatest work is his own resurrection. But it's not complete until and unless we participate in it. He didn't resurrect from the dead for his own health. He did it for us. What possible value is the resurrection if it goes unanswered by the very people for whom it was intended? The resurrection is an invitation which waits for a response from us. Same deal for Gregory. His release from Chorvirab is just another historic fact until we come to terms with it. The lesson of St. Gregory is so obvious, but too often we miss the point. Nobody not Jesus Christ, not the church fathers, certainly none of the martyrs would ever say it's easy to be a Christian. The lesson of St. Gregory is not how wonderful it must have been for Gregory to be freed from the torture of the pit and convert Armenia. Uh-uh. The lesson is how honorable it must have been to carry the cross even through the torture of the pit for 13 years, all the way to the conversion of Armenia. For Christ, first it was the crucifixion, then it was resurrection. For Gregory, first it was Chorvirab, then it was freedom to convert the Armenian nation. For St. Stephen, first it was the honor, horror, horror of being stoned to death, then it was glory of being crowned the first Christian martyr. For Hayastan, first it was 70 years of brutal atheistic communist government, then it was independence in a free church. For anyone going through a 12-step program, first it's the struggle of breaking away from the addiction, then it's a joyous recovery. Should we really be surprised that the church, the Armenian church fathers, placed two feast days for St. Gregory on the church calendar? The first to acknowledge his painful entry into the dungeon, the second to celebrate his joyous freedom from the dungeon. So let's be inspired. Let's be inspired by his endurance. Let's be inspired by his courage to face the torture. Let's be inspired by his love for the hopeful gospel message. 
Blessed be the name of St. Gregory. Blessed be the vision of St. Gregory. And blessed be the mission of Holy Etchemiadzin to bring the light of Jesus Christ to every one of us in Hayastan, in the dioceses, in the Spurk. And I ask that we remember that in the name of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.